our Easter card making class. I'm so excited for the third one. Sad that it's almost over, but don't worry. I'm going to give you guys all, as promised, I will give you a sneak peek of the um, contents of our next class at the end of the session. So you can look forward to that. Um, just a little housekeeping before we get started. I mean, this is number three, you probably all know the drill, but we're gonna keep everyone muted. And then if you have any questions, just type them into the chat box at the bottom of the uh, Zoom screen there. And either I or Sarah will um, hop on and get any answers for you, uh, answer those questions. We've got Sarah in the producer's booth, so she's gonna try and pump out all of that info to you. And we've got a special little, um, not, I shouldn't say little, a special big discount code for you guys that we're going to put in the chat box at the end of this session as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, so I think, I think you all know the contents of our kit, but for today we're going to be using, uh, I think you all saw the prep instructions. I hope I sent it out, so I hope everyone's ready to rock with me. Um, but we're going to be using our embossing folder, or you should have already used it if you followed those prep instructions. We're going to be using our gems today, all kinds of goodies, our HC toppers, our little letter stamps. We're going to do an extra little bonus craft with our egg transfers. I hope you guys were able to get um, either plastic eggs or real eggs. I was blowing some eggs out this morning and got egg yolk all in my hair, but it's a little extra protein. Hopefully it's looking good. <laughs> uh, we're going to use our clip punches today, matte chalk polish, our ribbon, um, what else? Our little um, 3D topper scenes, of course our paper, our lovely pastel papers. Um, I think that's, we're pretty well set. So as always, the session will be recorded, so if you want to rewatch, do whatever, you can do that. It's on our, it'll be on our YouTube channel, um, Ecstasy Crafts Inc., and it'll also be on our blog. I've posted the first and second session on our blog with some pictures uh, if you wanted to check that out too, just if you wanted a recap or whatever. But I've been seeing the um, pictures that you guys have been posting to um, Facebook and Instagram using our hashtag crafting, no, why do I always do it? Ecstasy card class, at least you guys are remembering, hashtag ecstasy card class. I've been seeing that you've been posting the cards that you've been making. I'm loving it. Um, we've, we're going to do the draw on Monday to see from everyone who's shared and used that hashtag. Um, we will draw and you will be entered sorted and then you'll you can the winner will get a free um, spring flowers virtual class kit so I'm excited to give that away good luck to everyone who has entered and if you haven't already you've got the weekend to post your pictures of the cards that you've made in class and share with everybody uh, our Facebook group um, crafting with ecstasy on Facebook is a great spot to share it. I've been seeing lots on there already and it's fun to be able to see what everyone's working on. Okay, uh, what else did I wanna cover? I think that pretty much does it. Oh, if you are watching and you don't have a kit, they are sold out. We sold out really fast, um, but I'm trying to scrounge together the pieces um, to make a few more kits available. I've had lots of people asking. Um, so we're just waiting on the organza, the gorgeous organza ribbon. I'm just waiting on a shipment of that. And once that comes in, I will be updating the website and we will have a few more kits, not many, but if anybody desperately needs one, um, you, can, you can order them on the website. Okay, so shall I flip us over to our other camera? And let's get started on card one. Okay, let me get reorganized where I get all my things back up. All my screen so I can see our chat boxes. Okay, there we go. I wanna see what you guys are talking about um, while we work. Okay, so for card one, I'm starting with, if you guys saw the prep instructions, um, you'll know we've got a four and a, four and one eighth by five and three quarter card base. And I'm just using off-white card stock. You can use the off-white that's in our um, 
that's in the Easter kit if you haven't used that one already. And then um, we've got our embossed little um, off-white card stock using our embossing folder. I've al we've already done that up. And then, oh, here's the card that we're gonna be making. Something like that. Okay, so stick stick with me. Let's grab our um, matte chalk polish. Now we can do it a couple different ways. Anita actually made this card and um, you can see she applied the matte chalk polish to the entire background or you can do it similar. I don't know if you can remember or see on this one where we applied it just to the raised, um, the raised bits of our, of our embossed card. That was last, last week's class. So I think I'm going to apply it to the full card stock and see, so we can really work it in. And I mean, you, you could apply it before, before you start, um, before you emboss it, but we're, we're here now. So you can do whatever one, whichever way you want. You just have to work, work it around and add some texture to, to kind of our sky background there. And it goes on nicely. I love these built-in applicators. They're super duper handy. And I'm gonna go a little thinner than Anita did, just for a nice, like a lighter blue. But if you want that nice bright blue, like she got, just apply it a little thicker or do another coat, whatever. And by going back and forth, you can get it in all the crevices of our embossed folder. Ooh, what could be cute is a nice light application first, and then you can go back and use the technique that we used last week and darken it up on just the embossed places. I might do that. So just get the raised bits for darker. Hi, everybody. I can see you saying hi in the comments. Thanks so much for joining us today on the third Easter card making session. I can't believe after this one, we're going to have to wait until April for our next class. But it'll be worth the wait. I'm so excited to show you guys this next kit. I, it's going to be a lot of fun learning some new techniques and stuff. So I'll show you that at the end of class. Okay. Oh, and the matte chalk polish, if you've been loving playing around with it, um, we did just get some new colors in. There's some really nice um, vintage looking colors, like a dusty rose and um, like a dusk. I think they call the dust, dusty purple. It's really nice. Um, so check those out if you want. I think Sarah just posted the link in there. Okay. Okay, so we've got our background. I'm just going to set it aside and we'll let it dry before we attach anything. So I'm going to cut a piece of off-white cardstock for our little, do I have that in the corner there? Yeah, for our little sentiment. I've already cut one, um, but I'll, I'll slow down to give you guys a chance. So the measurements are one and one eighth inch by two and a half inches for this, our little, it's gonna be our little sentiment plate. So you can do that. And while we're working on that, I will grab my stamping platform because we're gonna stamp our little letters on there. So again, the measurement for our little sentiment thing is one and one eighth inch by two and a half inches, just in a little, uh, little off-white cardstock there. Now you can stamp in whatever ink you want. We're going to stamp on with our little letters. Um, and you can make whatever sentiment you want. Um, I might do, I'm, so like I said, this is Anita's card. She designed it and this is my first time making it. And I might go in a little bit of a different direction and do a little bunny 
out of our 3D scene. There's a rabbit on there that I might use. Maybe you guys get creative, do use whatever you want. You can see we're just, we're just building a scene. We're gonna use kind of like the green element to make a little grass, whatever. So think about it. Think about what direction you wanna take. And I'm gonna make mine say Hoppy Easter instead of Happy Easter. You know, you all know how I love my puns. Um, now you might be seeing Anita's card. She used uh, a little inverted corner punch on her cardstock. And I mean, I'll show you how it works if I have a scrap piece of paper here. I'm not going to use it, but just in case, we've got these punches and they round. I think this one's sold out right now, so sorry. But um, so it just inverts that corner there. We, we do, they do come in a couple different sizes and we are going to be in the back in stock. Um, so if you wanted a little tool to quickly make, you know, just dress your, um, your card up a little bit, that's, that's the way to go for sure. You don't need a die, you don't need anything, you can just do it with another little punch. So lots of fun. Uh, and they have rounded corners, so you can have nice rounded edges, that kind of thing. All right, so. I better get, now you guys are probably ahead of me again. Um, I'm talking too much. I'm going to spell Hoppy Easter because I think that's cute. <laughs> but, and if you're going to write something else, share it with the class in the chat box, what, you're, what sentiment you're using if you're doing something different. I want to know. I think, I think it was Heather. I remember correctly that shared her cards on our Facebook group, Crafting with Ecstasy. Hi, Heather, if you're, if you're tuning in today. Um, and she used a, an actual happy Easter sentiment. I guess she'd had, had it with the letters <laughs> fiddling around with them. So I really liked the, uh, that stamp, it was nice. And again, we have cute little uh, cute little Easter sentiments up on the website as well. Lots to choose from. Okay, so I'm going to stamp with my VersaFine black ink, um, but you could be using the brown ink if you had a brown to, you know, do our egg splatters in our first session or use whatever, whatever you want to stamp with. And I've got to do it I have the double P in hoppy, so I have to stagger it a bit. And remember, if you're moving them around, <laughs> well, you kept messing up with the letters, Heather. Well, it looked great. And oh, Bev, thank you for that tip. We can round the corners. We could even use our oval punch that comes in the kit. I love that idea. Bev says she uses her circle punch to create a similar effect. Genius. Thank you for sharing. I love these classes. I always get, I always learn so much from you guys. Okay. Pick up my PY, my hoppy. I'm going to, I'm going to go for the double. my Easter letters lined up. And I love the stamp Buddy Pro, it's got the grid lines right on the clear plastic thing here. So I can just get, really, I can just get my first letter stuck on and then just follow the grid lines to build the rest of my word. Oh, I can't, I can't spell the full word. I need my other E. There we go. I'm going to bump it over a bit. I don't think it's quite centered. There we 
there. That should be better. Got Hoppy East. We're getting close. Where's my R there? Oh, a tip from Ashley. She did lowercase and the B and the P are the same letters so she can do, do the full happy because she just uses a B, an upside down B and a P. Smart guys, thank you for sharing Ashley, awesome. Okay, so I've got my hoppy Easter. Now I think, my, my matte polish should be dry by now. So where's my, I'm gonna stick it on with some double-sided tape onto my card base. You can use glue, you can use foam tape if you want to add a little depth, get started building your depth. Always nice. Whatever, whatever you're working with is fine. Now, I, I like this card because, you know, we're on class three. I think you guys can get creative with your own, uh, your own scenes. You know what you're doing. I mean, you've known what you were doing from the start, but I'm happy we're doing this one. This gives you a little more room to play and build whatever scene you want. Okay. So now I'm going to grab my topper sheet. So we've already used, you know, our little Easter joys scene on our first card or no that was last week or on one of our second cards second session cards um okay so you guys gave me heck because i didn't use my cutter last time to do this but i'm using my scissors but you can use a cutter whatever i'm just going to grab um a piece of this green to make a little grass line uh at the base to start start to build our scene. You know what? Fine. I'll use my cutter. I'm going to use my Nelly's Choice cutter because you're right. It's, <laughs> I should for a straight line like that. Okay. So here we go. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use one of the bunnies. So I'm going to trim my grass so that it fits right on to this card stock. So about one inch by three and a half inches. The only about thing is the one inch. It's, I think whatever, yeah, it is only one inch. So you don't really have much of a choice, but we wanna keep, make sure it's three and a half inches. So then it fits on our, on our card, on our skyline. What did I say? Three and a half. Turn it to three and a half. Here we go. Okay, now I'm not going to attach anything 
until I have my scene designed. So I'm just gonna kind of place them in there before I nail anything down. Cause I might wanna pop the grass up higher and use some foam pads, or maybe I want it in the back. So I'm not gonna make any big moves here until I've got, got my scene built. Now, I think I'm gonna go just with the bunnies. Now, Anita used the one of the sheep to do the one with the little daisy in its mouth. I think that's very cute, too. Um, I guess it won't be much of a scene if I do the bunnies, will it? It's just their little floating heads. <laughs> oh, well, I think that's cute. I want to do them. <laughs> I like it. You do whatever you guys feel like doing. So I'm popping out all of my pieces. I'm gonna build my bunny heads because I know that that's happening for sure. But I won't stick them onto the card quite yet until I'm set. Although I'm pretty happy, I like that. And then we'll have our sentiment. Cute. What are you guys using? Are you gonna use the sheep or the the bunnies? I'll I mean maybe I'm uh, uh, being influenced because I actually I have sheep. I have four sheep and I've been having to do the chores when I get home after work and they're just bawing at me. <laughs> and and it, they're quite demanding, these sheep. They're very spoiled. Um, so maybe I'm just sick of sheep right now. <laughs> so I'm just throwing my foam pads onto my elements. If you're doing the bunnies, you got your ears are going to pop up or one of the ears is going to pop up and if you're doing the sheep you've got your sheep body the head the little <laughs> the cute little curls at the top i mean these are very cute sheep so i'm using the hunky dory foam pads i love them i love the larger foam option the larger square for for when you can fit it That's cute. Okay, two more. Two more to go. Do you guys have a pretty good supply stash you have foam pads at home so you're able to do this i hope i'm thinking of putting together um a little you know crafting essentials bundle for anybody who might be watching and is a super beginner or just want to restock on you know your crafting basics you do oh, okay ashley you'd be interested okay we'll see i'll see what i can pull together for you you can have it out in time for the next the next class series okay now did I put? Yeah. Okay. Gonna raise them up. Make them like they're bouncing around. 
<laughs> Just two, you need everything. <laughs> I don't know if I can supply everything, but I'll, I'll see what kind of bundles I can put together. I mean, we've got everything at on the website. So we should be able to get you guys covered for sure. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pop my grass up. With my foam. There you go, Sarah just posted in the chat. If you want, you can get the glue tape and foam tabs. She's got the link up there for you. Perfect. Now on Anita's sheep, she's added in a little, uh, the little bells. What are, the, what are those things called? The, the, they're the first things that come up in the spring, aren't they? Snow bells? No, that's not right. Something. So that's cute. You could always add those on if you wanted. Build your scene out if you're doing the sheep. In real life, if my sheep were that close to some flowers, they would definitely eat them. <laughs> if they get out of the barnyard, they destroy my flower beds. Okay, got my bunnies on there. And I do really love this chick down in the corner. It makes it Lily of the Valley. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, Helene. Is it Helene? I like that name. Okay, I like it. It kind of brings the scene to life with the little chick down there in the corner. So because I popped my grass up, I'm going to just use some tape on there to stick him on the corner. <laughs> Very cute. Okay, then we've got our sentiment. I'm gonna stick that on with some foam pads too, but again, glue, tape, whatever, all works. Oh, I can't wait to see the pictures of what you all decided to do. Okay, so still kind of plain. I'm going to add, what am I gonna add? I like the green flowers there. They're nice, it ties in with the grass. Ooh, maybe I'll use some of these, the like actual flowers from the grass. So you could layer those on the grass if you wanted. You know what I mean? Uh, but I think I'm going to just bring them up, bring them up to the top. Kind of funky looking. And then of course I need to use these big green ones. And I like how she has them all three together with the gems in there. Very cute. Do I like the look of that? Yeah, I do. I think I do. Or we could go off the side. Oh, uh, I like that better. Yep, that's what I'm going with. I'm excited to see your pictures of these ones. I think they're all gonna look very different. Everybody has different tastes. 
get to get creative. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, so I better stick them on there. And just have them overlapping off of the, or not overlapping, um, like half on, half off kind of thing on my sentiment. There. Okay. And then, of course, we can add really the card is yours to play around with. Gems in the corners is always nice. Uh, and then, of course, as the center of the flowers, very cute. Really make them pop. You could add them to your grass. You can do all kinds of things with gems just to add another little element in there. Very cute. Okay, now, where did I throw those gems? So I love that this, these ones come with, you know, the different sizes of gems. And if you need gems in different colors, these Diamond Sparkle ones by Hunky Dory are so awesome. I think I already told you guys, but I just, saw the um, incandescent ones and oh my goodness they are so pretty the sparkle on those so i'm going to use the little itty bitty ones and just put the center of my flower on there like how anita did with her large flowers i'm gonna use that idea and just add a little center oh did i lose my glue dot there we go. I think I told you last time, if you, you know, sometimes the glue dot might not come up with the gem, you can just go back and pick it, pick it back up like I just did. No big deal. So did everybody get their punches, their clip punches sharpened up for class today? You got your clip punching arms ready to go? <laughs> I hope, because we're gonna use them in our next card. Okay, so there we go. Couple different options for this one. I love it, lots of fun. I hope you guys liked it. And again, I'd better see some posted <laughs> using our hashtag ecstasy card class because I want to see what everybody else did and we all still have the rest of this 3d scene thing so we can take ideas from each other and build on it okay make more cards let me clear this out of the way and we can get started on our next card okay now where are we We've got, 
I don't need those yet. Got my, the, oh, this is our card. This is what we're going to be making. We're going to be using uh, um, the threader technique on our alphabet clip punches. So if you followed the prep instructions, you already know that we have a card base that is four and a quarter inch by five and a half inch in white cardstock. I'm using for this one just to match the uh, bright white of the eggshell there. But uh, if off white or whatever, whatever you've got will work as well. You could also just build the full card out of the pastel green. We're going to use it as a background color. So you could make the full card, um, the pastel green, if you wanted. Uh, but I like to have the insides of my cards white. So that's why I did it that way. Oh, yep. Thanks, Sarah. Don't forget our coupon code for all of the clip punches is still up until the end of the month. So it's punches 50. Uh, I saw a few orders come in. You guys are scooping up those punches, playing with them. Um, so cool. If you're playing around with them, post them to uh, the Crafting with Ecstasy group. I want to share them, share what you're working on. Okay. So we've got our card base. Now I've trimmed up my green card stock um, to the four and a quarter by five and a half inch, same as our card base. And I am just going to attach it on there. And then of course we have our, uh, our embossed piece of white card stock and we trimmed that to four inches by five and a quarter inches. That was in the prep instructions too. So I hope everyone was able to get that done. If not, you can do it now. Don't worry, don't worry. Um, okay, so I'm going to, how do I wanna do it? Yeah, well, we've got lots of time. Okay, I'm gonna attach my green cardstock onto my card base. My nice pastel, I've loved working with these pastel, um, with these pastel papers and all the whole line of, um, of papers from this brand is so nice. Let me actually, let me grab the box because I forget the name of it. Which one is it? I can never say the name. I'm, I'm gonna grab it and then I still won't even be able to say the name. Oh, the Cascade Folio. So this is the like full package and we broke it up and gave everybody just a sheet of each color in their thing, but um, there's eight colors and five sheets of each color uh, in, in the package. And we have them in bright colors. We've got summer, a summer color scheme. This is the pastels collection that we used for this kit. Um, there's autumn, an autumn collection. I really love the quality of these, these car stocks. It's nice to have on hand to have just a few sheets, you know, of the color range and they all go perfectly together, the shades in each collection. So if, if you need to build up your stash, you've got that option. So I'm just attaching my green cardstock onto the card base with my double-sided tape. Try and line it up as best as I can. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then I'm going to apply my matte chalk polish just to the raised bits. You've done it before, you can do it again. There we go. And I don't, I haven't got any questions about it. I'm assuming you guys all know, but, or maybe I've already mentioned it, but the, um, the little applicators can just be washed with soap and water, uh, soap and water, or just just water does does pretty well on its own as well. You don't need soap unless unless you've gotten into some deep trouble, <laughs> then you might require soap. So I'm just gently brushing it on to the raised bits from my embossing folder. Don't worry, it's not the end of the world if you swipe it on and it gets on the non-raised bits either. It's just a background, the full focus, like you're not gonna notice once it's on the card. It's no big deal.
And to load up my brush, I mean, this is class three, you guys already know how to use the polish, but just, just getting a little bit on there, saturating it, but I don't want any big clumps because that's, that's what's going to dip below the applicator and smear on the non-raised parts. So you want to make sure it's a nice smooth, smooth applicator that's going on there. So no lumps or anything as I apply it. Oh, but see, I even still smudged it. So, although you guys already know I'm not perfect. <laughs> Okay, so we'll set that aside and let it dry for a second, although it just dries so quick. I love this stuff. Okay. It's just a ground. We've got millions of them up on the website. All right, so now what do we want to do? We want to grab a scrap of our white card stock and we're going to use our double punch, the, you know, with the two, not the one that we use for our clip, not the one cutter, but it has the two. That's what we're going to use to thread through on our ribbon. So just like last time when we were doing the clip we are going to line it up with the side of the cardstock. Oh, I better stand up for this. I'm gonna line it up with the side of the cardstock. And clip. Simple as that. And then I'm gonna go into my oval, line it up with the side of the cardstock so I know that it's lined up with the first punch and cut it out. So I'm going to spell Happy Easter. So that's what, how many? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. I need eleven. And you do too if you're <laughs> spelling Happy Easter. But you again, any sentiment you want. So once I've lined it up with the side of the paper, now I've already clipped my first one. I'm just going to line it up with the edge of my last oval. All you need is just something to line it up on. Um, if you're having trouble with that, you can always trace the punch with a pen or pencil, and then you'll know where to line it up to for your, your oval as well. How many did I say? 11. I need 11. Okay. And again, if it's hard for you, Anita in our first class shared the tip of using, uh, I think she used a paint stir stick or anything, you know, to just grab on. I mean, this ruler's not going to work, it's too bendy, but to just grab onto and use to push down and give you a little more leverage. Oh, Debbie says, turn your punch upside down. It's much easier. Okay, I'll give it a go. Oh, not bad, Debbie. And you can see where you punched before. I don't know, Debbie. <laughs> it, is, it is easy to line up. Maybe that's what you mean, so that you can just see through the hole. I'm sure that's what you mean. Because you punch your first one, whatever, and then you can see 
through the last bunch. Two, four, six. Okay, more than halfway. And I'm just going to continue lining it up with my last oval. Oh, Ashley did hers upside down too. Awesome. Do whatever works, guys. Two more. Get the 11 that I need. There we go. Okay. Oh, Lorraine, use the stamp block. Smart. You mean to like push down on the clip punch? Use a little acrylic block to help? I like that idea. Smart, smart, smart. Oh, there's my acrylic one. So just like this. Oh, well, now that I'm done, that doesn't help me, but hopefully it can help <laughs> somebody in the future. <laughs> I like it. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my platform and stamp my letters. Where? There we go. There they are. Where's my H? Oh, down here. Goodness. Okay. Oh, Antoinette, I like that idea. She used her chalk polish on the edge of the base instead of using the green paper. Very cute. So her edge is going to be the chalk blue and it'll match the embossed perfectly. I really like that idea. Instead of the green paper, she just went on the edge and applied the chalk polish. Very cool. I feel like this, this Easter series has just been punching, punching clip punches <laughs> and stamping these letters. So I'm excited for our next kit. I'm including some dies. So, oops, I didn't take my H off. So get ready. We've got, get your cutting and embossing machine ready. For our next one. Um, if you don't have one or if you want to upgrade, we've got our Go Power and Emboss machines that are fully electric. And what a treat to use. I absolutely love mine. I have not stopped using it since I got it. 
and maybe maybe I'll show you at the end of class. And they're on sale right now too. So if you, you know, if you're planning on doing the next class and you don't have a machine, definitely one to consider. They're a hundred dollars off. Uh, you get free shipping, and we're going to post a coupon code for you in the chat box. So only those of you have, who have tuned in live get this coupon code. Uh, Sarah will post it. I'm not going to say it out loud because we, we post a recording of this. So it's just those of you who are watching live, you get the coupon code. So write it down and you can use that this weekend. That's it. You get an extra $25 off on top of the $100 off that's already going on. So you guys get a little extra or a big extra booster sale if you need it. If you need the machine or, or want the machine. <laughs> it's a great one. And it comes with um, two embossing folders with the, the machine itself. Two embossing folders and um, and 30 dies, which is sweet. I think I think I recognize a couple of the names that are watching. And I know they I'm pretty sure teens. We've had lots of good good feedback of them. Everybody likes them. Saves you cranking a, a manual machine too. Um, where am I? Happy Easter. Oops. I love the magnetic stamping board, but oh my goodness, it's scary when those magnets snap together like that. <laughs> Gotta move your fingers quick. So we can do, uh, you know, you could be stamping horizontally or you could be stamping vertically and then you could run a ribbon, obviously vertically, right? So you can get a couple different ways to do this. We're doing horizontally in this card, but I like to have options. That's why as fiddly as these little individual letters are, I like, it's a good, it's good to have it in your craft stash for sure. Oh, I forgot my tea. Skipped right over it. Hey. Is everybody else doing happy Easter? Nothing punny out there you want to share with the class? Happy spring, you could make it more versatile, do the same type of thing. Chicks are just spring, not necessarily Easter. So you could transition it into kind of the next thing, next season. There. Okay. Get my lid back on my ink. I love the VersaFine for stamping letters and 
uh, sentiments and stuff like that. It's just so perfect with that fine detail. Not that these are super fine, but I like I, that I don't have to worry about it smudging. Okay, get that out of the way. Now, now what's next? What are we doing? I'm going to grab my green ribbon. Oh, we got Carol doing Hoppy Easter. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm grabbing my green ribbon and I'm going to cut two five inch ish lengths of it. If I can get got scissors right here, what am I doing? If I can get into it. So you want five inches. That's just going to give us enough extra to wrap around either side. Ruler out. Oh, you hear that snap? That's another, the magnetic crafting board. I love it. Holds your things in place. That's by Nellie's. And it comes with the, the magnetic ruler. So two five inch lengths. And I'm going to start threading on my letters. I guess I can go, I'm going to start like that. So wedge it through. I know this ribbon is a little wider than, um, than what the clip punch cuts, but I love the um, effect that it does. It kind of like, I don't know if pleat is the right word. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. We gotta go in from the front. Your stamp. And then out from the back so that we have our stamp at the, on the front. There we go. Yeah, I love that it's thicker because I love the little, the pleats that you get, not pleats, what are they called? I don't know, something, the little ruffle. It's just adorable, I think. So I started with my P because it's going to be at the, oh, in from the front, come on. I don't know if you can see close enough. So in from the front and then out from the back. There we go. And then that gives us our little poof in between the letters that is just adorable. Okay. So now I'm going to come in yeah, on the other side. Those strung on there. Tweezers might come in handy if it's too fiddly for you. I just love this organza ribbon. Beautiful. Okay, my A. And out from the back, oops, lost it. <laughs> Come on. And you could do this with strips of paper too. It doesn't have to be ribbon, you know, for future projects. If you wanted a color that maybe you don't have ribbon in, it works you're not going to get the nice little like poof in between but strips of paper cut to the the width of the um the clip punch that works too Okay. 
There we go. Now let's start. I'm going to start with my T. Do the back half of the word first. And you can always wiggle them around and, you know, slide them around to make sure they're evenly spaced once they're all on there. Now, is everyone thinking about which topper they're going to use? Which little 3D topper they're going to build? You've got choices. These 3D toppers are such a deal, like to get 10, 10 different ones in there. And we have a huge variety of different uh, toppers up on our website for all different kinds. We just got new ones in too, for nice spring, spring collection. They make such cute cards. They're nice and easy, aren't they, Nuri? Easy to build, make such an impact. Okay, right, make sure you get those letters on in the right order. I should have said that from the start. <laughs> it's a little late now, I'm getting my last one on. I hope I didn't spell anything wrong. <laughs> no, looks good, looks good. This, Janet, this is your favorite? Me too. I, the, I, I wanted to build up to, you know, I think this is the like most involved technique with the clip punches, at least. Save the best for last, I guess. I'm glad, I'm excited. You're gonna be joining the spring, the spring class. I can't wait for the spring flower one. I'm excited to show you guys what's going to be in it. So I'm giving you a sneak peek. We're not releasing it out into the wider public until I wanted to give you guys a chance to head over and order them because we're only doing 100 kits and we've already sold quite a few. So I wanted to give you guys a chance before we release more details. If you want one, grab it because I have a feeling they're going to sell out pretty quickly. Okay, so we've got our letters strung on. Now I'm going to attach it to the back of our embossed sheet. And I think, what did we decide? I'm gonna use sticky specs, but again, glue, tape, whatever. You already know how to attach the ribbon. And the sticky specs work just so well. and just fold it around. And I like leaving it like, not loose and droopy, but just a little, like I'm not pulling it super tight. I wanna leave the, the little like poofs in, in between the billows. I don't know what the word is, guys. Somebody type it in the chat box and help me out here. <laughs> I've been shopping for cartons. So maybe that's, I've. I've gotten the terminology stuck in my head. There we 
There we go. And again, you can move them around and space everything out properly once they're on there. Ah, oh, so cute. Hope everyone's keeping up, doing okay. We're just keeping it to the top of the card because we want to make sure we're leaving room for our little chick on the bottom. No, Helene, you're not, <laughs> you're not keeping up. I'm sorry. I'll try to go a little slower. And don't forget, you can always watch the recording. We'll have it up later on our blog or YouTube. Not to worry. Just make sure you, you got that coupon code for the Go Power. Ooh, a green polish. Nice, Linda. That would be cute. Okay, so I'm going to put some tape on here and get that attached to my card base. Make sure you share those pictures, Linda, and use our hashtag. What is it? Ecstasy card class. I've got it. <laughs> Finally, by the last class, I've remembered it. And yeah, I'm going to be doing the draw for the Spring Flowers Kit on Monday. I might do a Facebook Live to do that draw. We'll see if I have time on Monday. And we'll let the winner know, I guess, over, over Facebook. We'll announce it on our Facebook. That's what we'll do. We'll announce the winner on our Facebook um, so that you know that you won. And then the, the kits aren't going to ship out for a little while, but you can order them now and you, you know, you'll reserve your spot. We've got lots of people already signed up, like registered for the, um, the Eventbrite class already. So make sure you register for that too. They're already up there. You can hop, hop in there, and snag your spot. What one do I want to use? I think I want to do this one. That's cute. Okay. Oh, now I'm going with that. The nice tulips scream spring to me. <laughs> Good point, Helene. You can't, it's not like you can go anywhere anyways. So take your time. Hey. Oh. oh, I love it. And like, just such a nice variation on the card just by changing the topper. You can send it to all your friends, do the same card, you know, and send, just change the topper. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Now grab my foam pads. <laughs> so cute. Okay. 
I can't say enough about these big foam pads. Makes life so much easier. And those little teensy ones when you don't need them, you know? And I love the glitter on the topper. So pretty. Just a little glitter detail. Some of the uh, toppers, like not in this pack, but different packs. Some of them have glitter and some of them have a nice hot foil, like a, a gold detail that's really nice as well. Just beautiful. Good work. There. A gorgeous, another gorgeous little Easter card. And just, I love using the different, not just all paper, the ribbon adds a nice touch. So you better post those pictures. I want to see everybody's. Post them. Join the Facebook group if you haven't already. I know I've already said it, but. I love being able to keep in touch with everybody. Okay, gonna move on. Yes, and use the hashtag ecstasy card class if you're posting them so that we can enter you in the draw for the spring flowers class kit. Okay, so, no, oh, Sarah, <laughs> make sure you spell ecstasy right when you're posting them. Okay, so I've blown out Two little eggs, poked a pinhole in either end and just blew them out. So I'm going to decorate them. You can use um, eggs, plastic eggs. Um, it works on candles as well. We're gonna use our egg transfers. So you bought plastic eggs, Nuri, perfect. Yeah, it works on candles. I think it would probably work on glass too. You could do a really cute little Easter um, votive, votive, votive candle, you know, just like from the dollar store, grab a little candle holder, anything. Anything you want. So we're just gonna pick, make sure you have a little bowl of water. I've got my little container here, whatever full of water, I don't need those. And I'm just going to pick, we're just gonna use kind of like temporary tattoos if you've ever used something like that. Just gonna pick a, a design and cut it out. And we're going to kind of tattoo it onto, <laughs> temporary tattoo it onto our, eggs. So I'm going to go with, do one with these two little chicks on it. I think I'm just going to do one at a time and not, I've, I've used them before just working on the, this class, but I'm not super familiar with them. So I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm just going to put one at a time into the water. It doesn't take long. And they do have the instructions on the back. All you have to, on the back of the package. Um, so cut out the design, remove the transparent protection sheet, which is the little plastic sheet on top. And make sure we wet, oops, get that off. Get your plastic sheet off after you cut it out. And then I'm gonna put it in the water and get it totally wet. You can see it curl up. Make sure it's in there fully. And then I'm going to put, put it face down onto my egg. I'm going to make sure it's like wet. Okay, here we go. No, oh, it's gonna be so cute. 
and put it on my egg. Hold it down there, don't move it around. And it should attach on. So it says wait 20 to 30 seconds. I can see mine already coming off. It works fast. Oh, so cute. <laughs> can you see it? I hope it's working for you guys. So then you have to let it dry. Don't mess around with it. Let it, let it dry up on there. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> okay. I was gonna add like a lot more to this, but oh my goodness, just that is so cute. Um, okay, so what do I wanna put on my other one? And you know what we can do is make, well, I let that dry. We can make, a little um, egg stand. Why not? I just thought of this. So I'm just gonna cut a little strip. What do I want? Just a little strip of whatever color. Probably like, maybe maybe just a quarter, quarter inch, maybe a little bit more. And, okay, there we go. So I'm just gonna make a little stand for my egg. I'm gonna loop it around, make sure how long. I have tiny eggs, these are from my chickens and they're slacking these days. These eggs are puny, maybe. <laughs> maybe you guys can fit more than just one design on yours. Okay, so I'm trimming it. I've trimmed mine to about four and a half inches. And then just put a little bit of tape on there or glue or whatever. Stick it on. Oh my God, you can't see, I guess. <laughs> But it's cute. Oh, oh no, I got a runaway egg. Okay. That's why we need an egg stand. We should have done this first. Although it probably would get dripped on, but that's okay. It's just a little scrap of paper. There. Can you see? It's like a little collar for it. Perfect. You could stick some flowers on there. Some gems, oh, guys, we could make like our own kind of Fabergé egg stand <laughs> with our gems. Where did they go? Did I just throw them when I was done with them? Where are my gems? Well, whatever. You know, you, I'm sure you've got yours right in front of you. Where did I stop mine? Oh, there they are. I tucked them away already, goodness. Could stick, stick some gems on. Oh, we could stick gems onto the egg. I didn't even think of that. Gems onto the egg, onto your stand, anything. This is fun. I was like, I don't know, it's pretty, like it's, I used to, I used to decorate eggs as a kid for Easter, right? But this is cute. You get the idea. Could go all the way around. Whoops. Very nice. You could do a ring of gems on your egg. You could tie a little ribbon around your egg, across the belly of your egg. That would be cute. There, I've got my glitzy little stand. Ah, oh, adorable. And then I can take my ribbon 
I wanted. Do a little bow on there. I think it might require a little glue on this little itty bitty egg. To get it to stay. Maybe I'll do it on my other one. It's a little longer. <laughs> Don't pull at your bow too tight. You'll have a cracked egg. <laughs> Tie bow or do just trim it up with a little piece of glue. Have a nice little ribbon band around there. That's what I'm going to do. All right, can't tie a bow in front of you guys again. I've already embarrassed myself enough. <laughs> this is so cute. There we go. And cut out another tattoo. Put anything you want on there. So post the, some pictures of the eggs that you've done. Can't wait to see them. Now, cute. Oh, we could splatter some of our matte chalk polish on. I wonder what that would look like. Do I have a splatter bristle brush with me? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. I don't have any brush with me. Well, let's see what it looks like with the applicator. I'll play with it and then you guys don't have to take the risk. <laughs> you paint the full egg, but if you're going to use the polish, just make sure you use it after your little tattoo has dried because the polish is water soluble. So the, um, the water from the tattoo would, you know, smush it around. Not bad, not bad. Give a little like speckled look to it. I should have done this before I put my ribbon on. Play around with it guys, see what you can come up with. Fun. <laughs> Oh, washi tape. Yeah, Bev, great idea. Washi tape would work perfectly for this to decorate your little eggs with. Good idea. There. I'm gonna need my egg stand again. So cute. Okay, awesome. Now, as promised, I'm gonna flip you back over to my face. And I'm going to show you what's going to be in the next virtual class kit. What's going to be in our spring flowers virtual class kit. Can't wait. We're, we're diving in. Okay. So we're going to do a couple different techniques. I told you guys last time you got a sneak, sneak, not a sneak peek, but a sneak listen anyways i told you that we were going to do some foam flowers so sarah's just posted the link to order the kit uh in the chat box so if you want it grab it because i they're, they're already going quick but again i'm giving you guys a head start by showing you today so we've got some gorgeous colors of foam that's going to be included i told you we're going to do some foam flowers so i have some nice spring flower foam in this kit. Then of course, we've got the dye to cut those petals out. The petals and the leaves, we're gonna do some foam work uh, 
in, in our classes. So make sure you register for the classes, uh, just like you registered for this one on Eventbrite. Sarah just posted the link. Uh, so we've got the die to cut out all the petals to make the 3D foam flowers. So die, I'll show you the other die that's in the kit. Here it is, a nice man, mandala, mandala type die. We're gonna do a lot of fun stuff with it. I can't wait. <laughs> um, so make sure you have a die cutting machine. If you're ordering this kit, you do need the die cutting machine for this one. Um, I mean, you could still make the foam flowers with just a pair of scissors and you'd have to cut out each petal, but you're gonna want the die cut emboss machine. Sarah just posted the coupon code. It's already $100 off. You're already getting free shipping. It comes with the two embossing folders and the, um, and the 30 die cuts. I'm gonna grab it. This is the Go Power and Emboss machine. So it has power button, run, oops, where am I? Power button, run and reverse. There's not a whole bunch of technology to it. It's straightforward. You place your plates. It comes with all the plates you need. It comes with a rubber mat for um, embossing from your dies. It comes with the metal cut sheet. If you have a die that's being stubborn and needs a little extra oomph, it's self-adjusting. Um, so you're not having to adjust and place shims in and all kinds of stuff. It does everything for you. You're not tiring out your arm from cranking. Power, fully electric. Your plates run through beautifully. You can tell mine is well used, well loved. <laughs> I've been using it for all of my projects. Okay, so get the coupon code that's in the chat box if you want it for an extra $25 off. If you're watching live, you get the coupon code. Um, okay, I want you guys to be prepared for class come April. Um, what else? We've got a little foam chunk for building our foam flowers, for shaping those petals. We're going to do some really fun stuff, guys. Uh, I'm including a beautiful purple, purpley pinky. Oh, the light's not picking up very well. Purpley pinky ink um, for coloring our foam flower petals and adding all kinds of color to our cards. I'm so excited. Okay, we're, we've got some nice pearls. Instead of the gems in the Easter card, we're doing some nice classic pearls. We're doing, it's going to be a surprise what color you get, but it's going to be um, the little flower pearls. We're going to do a fun shaker card with some of the flower pearls. We've got the little bundle of stamen that are going to go in the center of our foam flowers. It's not going to be difficult, Nuri. Don't worry, you're gonna be able to handle it. I promise. Okay. I'm gonna we're gonna walk through it step by step. Uh sticky specs. Let me look into it. I know I've really sold them for you guys, eh? I'll see if we can probably we can probably throw um some a sheet of sticky specs in there for you guys to try out if you haven't already used them. Um, okay, so we've got a beautiful selection. This is the craft consortium papers. And uh, it has, it's double-sided, like these papers are to die for. Double-sided watercolors on the back. We've got pinks, blues, greens, yet yeah, reds, oranges, oh my goodness. And then on the front is this gorgeous spring flower print. The Craft Consortium papers are beautiful. This is from a little uh, six by six pad. Look at these, like some nice ditzy prints, greenery, some gorgeous ferns, some larger blooms. So, so nice. I'm so excited about these papers. I can't wait to show you the cards that we're gonna be making. Not today, not yet, um, but just know they're gonna be good. We've got some verses, some verse stickers that we're gonna, put inside of the cards that we can do with that. Um, building some more, I already used the one from this one, uh, building some more 3D toppers. We got some lovely spring flower, some spring flower ones in there. And then we've got, you're gonna get a 3D relief 
sticker, a spring flower 3D relief sticker. We've got a variety going out. So that's going to be a surprise too for which one you get. I can't wait. Oh, and then of course we've got our wrapped flower wire that we're going to use for the little uh, foam flowers that we're going to make the stems on there. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I hope you guys can join us. The classes, what what they, what they are the dates? They're going to be April 9th and 16th. Um, so hop on, get the kit. This You guys get a sneak peek of it um, before, before I release the kit contents, before Sarah gets it up on the website. Um, for everyone, I wanted to give you guys the weekend for a head start. Um, so get in there. Um, yeah, don't forget, you're going to need the die cutting uh, an embossing machine for this project. So, you know, the extra coupon code for the extra $25 off is in the chat. Scoop that up if you need to update your uh, die cut and emboss machine or get one off the bat. I can't wait. Don't forget to share those cards using ecstasy card class, the hashtag ecstasy card class. Um, I am excited to do the draw on Monday and announce the winner um, for the Spring Flowers Kit. Um, if, if you order one now and you are end up being the winner, um, don't worry, we can refund you. Or if you want to be the winner and give one to your girlfriend so that you can craft along together, you do, you do whatever. Um, so thank you so much for joining us for the Easter card class series. I have had so much fun with you guys. Don't forget, we've got the recordings for all of the sessions. They're going to be up on our YouTube and on our blog, uh, blog.ecstasycrafts.com. I've had so much fun getting to know you guys in the chat a little bit, and I can't wait for our next class series in April. So happy crafting, guys, and I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.